I'm a big fan of buying camera equipment, however, because camera equipment is very expensive, budget filmmaking and improvisation will have to do. For example, this isn't even plugged in, this is for dramatic effect. One of the most essential pieces of equipment for filmmakers that shoot on DSLR and mirrorless cameras will be a camera cage. A camera cage is able to provide impressive amounts of functionality and compatibility with other equipment. Whether that's 15mm rods, a monitor or a side grip, a camera cage can probably help you with it. So, how does one acquire one of these camera cages? Well, thankfully for newer models such as the Canon R6 and many of the Blackmagic and Sony cameras, you can pick a custom cage up practically anywhere due to companies like Small Rig and Tilter selling them basically everywhere you look. However, I don't own a Blackmagic or a Sony. I mainly shoot on Panasonics. Take this model here, for example, the Lumix G9. This has been my go-to camera ever since I upgraded it from my Panasonic G6 and I wanted to get a camera cage for it. However, upon closer inspection, I realised there aren't any camera cages for the G9 because they've all been discontinued. Thank you, small rig. So why not I just make one myself? After all, I've got a 3D printer. So this video is here to act as a guide to teach you how to make your very own 3D printed camera cage. Firstly, if you don't mind paying upwards of 50 to 100 pounds for a camera cage made out of aluminium, it might just be best to double check the internet just to ensure that the camera cage that you're looking for doesn't already exist. Once you've concluded that it doesn't, download or take some pictures of your camera's sides, front, top, bottom and import them into Fusion 360. Use the calibrate tool to designate each picture to the correct measurement. Make sure that all the photos are correctly aligned and start modeling your camera cage based off the images and measurements taken, remembering to leave space for the battery and SD port. Extrude the sketches by around 5 to 8 millimeters and add cylindrical holes for the quarter inch screw inserts that we'll add later. Make sure that each center hole is 9 millimeters away from the center hole of the neighboring hole. That's a lot of holes. That way it can easily be attached to side handles and other components. Make sure that you also add NATO rails and hot shoe mounts to allow more compatibility in components. Finally, once you have your model of your camera cage, you can print it. Side note, please don't use PLA to be printing your camera cages. You're better off printing it in something like ABS or maybe PETG, just because you need that extra layer of security knowing that it's not going to crumble as soon as you drop it. Therefore, I also suggest you print it 100% in film. Congrats, now you have a general frame for your camera cage. However, we're not done yet, we need to add the screw inserts. So what you do is you pop your screw inserts on the end of a soldering iron and you engrave them into the frame. You can finish the cage by adding a thumb screw to the bottom and voila! Just a reminder, please remember to double check your camera's dimensions and their key components just because if they turn out to be incorrect then you can end up wasting a lot of material which isn't really fun for anyone. So, now that we've actually built the camera cage, how comfortable is it to hold and how well does it perform? Well, I'm here at Grease the Musical at the Lincoln Drill Hall and I think this will be a perfect opportunity to see how well this actually performs. Ironically, this is plugged in because we're currently doing sound checks. So it's been a few days later and I've got the chance to properly test out this camera cage and my first impressions in terms of its ergonomics is that it's very comfortable to hold. It doesn't add that much weight to the camera so it's really easy to just take out the bag and start shooting something. Um, however, in terms of its strength, we can see that there's clearly been some sort of um, snappage here. Um, and that occurred when I was screwing in a tripod quick release to the bottom screws. Because it's obviously PETG and because I think there's something in the screw inserts, it basically turned the entire camera cage and bent it in half, causing it to snap. So please make sure that you have the correct print orientations and make sure that it's strong enough. But if this ever happens to you, you can just get a soldering iron and just quickly go over it over the snaps just to give it a little bit more of a solid foundation and to prevent it from cracking in the same place again. Do I prefer a 3D printed camera cage to a normal cage? Well, I don't have a real cage. If you can get a real cage, I would fully recommend you do so. However, 3D printed cages are a really good last minute resort and they're also a lot cheaper. So if your budget takes up a large factor on whether you get a camera cage or not, 3D printing probably be the best option. Once again, it really depends on what material you're printing, but overall, um, that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.